Hello, Jacob Dobson here in Photoshop doing a demonstration on masking. I'm also treating this as a demonstration for those just really brand new to Photoshop. So I'll be going through things uh, at a pace that I think would help be helpful for someone new to Photoshop. To begin with here, we have um, a canvas and I'm going to upload a few layers of images to mask. So to get started, we first go up to File, Place Embedded, and uh, upload an image here that uh, we're going to be working with. Here is Monument Circle uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. And we are going to mask a map of this city at this time uh, in the background, uh, revealing it from behind. So to get started, we have placed the first image that we'll be working with uh, on here to the canvas. Uh, you can see here it is um, placed here in a temporary way. We go ahead and hit enter or return and uh, that places the image down. Uh, at this point the move tool has been highlighted here and will be being used to help us place the image uh, more fittingly. Uh, I'm going to be moving this around just a little bit uh, as you can see here. When the masking tool or when the move tool is being used uh, if you do not see these um, little squares here in the corner of the image, you might want to click on this box here that says Show Transform Controls. That helps uh, you know how to grab these corners and drag this around to your liking, like so. So I'm going to be pulling this to the full size here, like so, as you can see. And uh, then when you're done, uh, hit Enter. And uh, that pretty much concludes the first step of uh, placing this first image. To, uh, as you can see over here on the layers uh, section, uh, we have something uh, called Indie Circle. That's the name of the photo I just imported. And it, as you can see, when I imported it with the place em uh, embedded feature, uh, it created it as its own layer. So we're going to do that again. We're going to go up here to File, Place Embedded. And uh, we're going to lay down the second image uh, called Indie Map. And we're going to lay that down just like so. So it's important when we lay down images that we never stretch them. Um, if you hold down the shift key, you can stretch these images, but we never want to do that uh, unless for very, very rare situations. Um, it is the easiest way to show the world you don't know what you're doing in Photoshop or with imagery if you stretch an image or squish it or squash it. So it's just something to avoid at all costs unless there's a very good reason and you've already got a good reputation behind you. So um, here we are just with this map. I want to enlarge it. If we want to zoom out, we can hit Command minus on a Mac um, and it can zoom out and we can have more room to drag if we so choose, uh, like so. So that's pretty much, and Command plus can zoom us back in uh, if we want. Now we notice this map is in front of our Indie Circle photograph and we want this map to be in the background. Uh, to take care of that, all we have to do is grab over here on the right the layer that's um, on top is the layer that will be seen on top. So if we want it to be behind, we just drag it below, like in the physical world. So uh, that can be a helpful tip. So now that we have these two images, I want to now show you how to mask um, the photograph of the city. Mask part of that image to reveal the map underneath. That's the idea of this composition, is to reveal the map in a faded cloud way underneath the photograph of this circle. So a map of this specific location revealed underneath. So to do that, grab the layer you would like to mask or highlight it by doing so like this, by clicking on that layer. Um, you can also turn off layers to show what's underneath by hitting this eyeball to the left of each layer. So with this circle, uh, indie circle photograph highlighted, I'm going to go down here to this little button here that looks like a Japanese flag, a little rectangle with a circle in it. We're going to click that, and as you can see up here, that created what we call a layer mask. And that layer mask, or this little square next to the photograph, represents uh, a little map of where we are going to be masking. So what I'm going to be doing to mask today for this specific demonstration is uh, a couple of features I want to show you. Uh, first, we want to grab this uh, regular uh, rectangular marquee tool and uh, basically you're going to be dragging like the uh, image like so and then um, as you do that you can do multiple things um, you can mask it with a uh, brush um, 
like this where we have um, a brush tool that acts as a, uh, a mask um, or we can uh, make sure that the black is on top so to mask the black down here when the when you're masking uh, layer is highlighted the brush tool is acting uh, in a function as a mask or an unmask now the key is that the black palette when the black palette is highlighted which is what this is right here um, you are masking what's underneath in that section and so the marquee tool acted as a kind of a guide as to how you're doing that if you want to remask um, like basically undo the mask you hit you click this little 90 degree arrow and it puts the white uh, palette on top white color on top that basically undoes the mask so uh, just something for you to be aware of if you ever want to get rid of the marquee tool or any selection that you've made just hit command D and that will get rid of that uh, for this demonstration I'd like to lower the opacity of my brush down. Um, actually, I'm going to show you what this does at full capacity first. So, um, and the hardness all the way up. And when this is being used, um, we can hit right bracket to enlarge the brush and left bracket to make it smaller. But anyways, when we have the this uh, feature on, um, we uh, have a sharp brush edge like this. And I'm going to show you how we did that. Um, basically, I took the hardness all the way up and um, also the opacity is up 100%. So with that, I can hit multiple uh, clicks and that literally just r raises it completely or masks completely what you had there. Using the masking tool is far better than using any like an eraser tool uh, because uh, if later on you want to unmask or re you know reapply what you masked um, with the white color right here uh, you can easily do that without any concern like it's basically still maintaining what's there and what's been masked so you can always undo it later so with that done um, I wanted to show you a couple other ways that we could handle um, this uh, let's so we, say we mask something and we want to um, uh, uh, undo that mask we just hit the white and, the undo and the it will undo that um, no matter how far ahead you are or down the road you are. Whereas the eraser tool may forget um, what was done and erased before. So uh, with that said, I want to show you what looks what it looks like if you take down the hardness all the way down uh, with the brush tool and give you a different feel. So as you can see that when I um, put the black back on, when I remask, you can see the f there's not a hard edge anymore. It's a very soft edge as you can see there. And in the center is 100% um, uh, opacity uh, in the erase. If you lower down the, uh, the opacity, what that can do is it can do a slight fade, uh, a little more faded uh, masking as well. And you can take that down to almost nothing and it's even subtler. So that's just something for you to be aware of. Now, um, I'm gonna go for the look I was going uh, thinking about um, showing the map in the sky kind of uh, from behind like so leaving the monument there to be exposed um, and then I can make the brush smaller and go uh, with more masking in certain areas and it fades off into the sky so that's kind of the idea of this masking tool um, I hope this was helpful I think that um, it's just something worth experimenting with and the brushes to help you get uh, the look you're going for. Uh, there's lots of ways to use this tool. Uh, this is just a beginning demonstration.